when it comes to the big screen adaptations of HP Lovecraft, you can't go wrong with the creative trio of Stuart Gordon, Brian Usner, and Dennis Powley. While their 1985 cult classic Reanimator was still in production, the gang dreamed up a game plan for future projects. They envisioned a series of movies based on the works of Lovecraft, which would again star Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton, reminiscent of how Roger Corman mass-produced Edgar Allan Poe stories with Vincent Price. They agreed that Shadow of Innsmouth was to be the follow-up to Reanimator, given the source material's relatively beefy size and fishy content. Powley was working full steam ahead on the script. Concept art was well underway too. Alas, Charles Band, and ultimately all of the other financiers at the time, found the concept of an evil fishman community to be ridiculous. <laughs> it isn't all bad news, of course. The team still continued their plan with films such as Bride of Reanimator and From Beyond, but Shadow Over Innsmouth was dead in the water. Until it wasn't! <laughs> At the turn of the century, their undying dream to adapt this particular novella finally saw the light of day, in some form. Leaving the uninspired American studios behind, they secured funding from Spain and created the 2001 film Dagon. Though it is named after another Lovecraft tale, it is basically a revised version of Shadow of Innsmouth. But after all this time, all this hype, did it live up to expectations? Within the opening minutes, Dagon not only treats you to a title screen right out of a late 90s fantasy PC game, Are the star shining tonight? you also get mermaid nipples. So you could say, the film gets off to a pretty decent start. <gasps> Our hero, Paul, was simply having that fishy recurring nightmare again, damn it. He awakes on a boat alongside his partner, Barbara. Those of you with keen eyes will notice that these are not Combs and Crampton, but Ezra Godden and Raquel Morono. Their presence is sorely missed. I'm not dead! But Ezra in particular is working hard to try and capture Jeffrey's campy qualities, if not entirely successfully. Oh, oh, oh there's gonna be a beautiful sunset! Well, <laughs> that's great! That makes everything alright then! Hmm, maybe that is why the camera is shaking so much. They were trying to mask the fact that this was a different cast. Well guys, it didn't work. All it gave us was a headache. And a shaky look at Paul's snot, and his admittedly impressive naked shuffle. Paul has recently struck rich via some vague internet shenanigans, and is now on vacation off the coast of Spain. Despite all this good fortune, he is restless and frankly acting strangely. <laughs> Worst of all, if he goes more than five minutes without saying the words two possibilities, he will die. Two possibilities. Two possibilities. Two possibilities. Two possibilities. Two, two possibilities. Two possibilities. Two possibilities. So he bickers with Barbara, who doesn't have much of a character besides wanting to enjoy this holiday and a running gait that would give Jack Sparrow pause. They share on his boat ride with a couple. Vicky, and Howard, who has a mouth even more terrifying than the Nightmare Mermaid. This stuff isn't too important. The setup is all very brief. After hearing some creepy chanting from the nearby island, a terrible storm capsizes them. Don't cry for me, I'm already dead. When I say terrible, yes, I mean the storm is bad. But more importantly, the CGI is fucking god awful. Just look at it. That makes me green at the gills. It is clunkier than this hubcap sound effect. Brickering couples, shaky camera work, cheap CG, 
you might be tempted to shut off the film here, but I would implore you otherwise. The younger couple wash up on the island, and things start getting good for us, but even worse for them. The island is named Imboca, aka the Spanish translation of Innsmouth, aka these poor sods are doomed. The odour of damp dead fish prevails through the screen as they traverse this uncanny shipping village. The only locals to be found are unsettling to say the least, quiet, pallid, and always shuffling about. The couple are separated by the locals, and Paul takes refuge from the endless rain inside the hotel. Frankly, I'll take my chances with a whole winter season at the Overlook Hotel. Van Endure, the social anxiety tenor of the silent staring fish butler. Uh, it's upstairs? The room? Is... Uh, upstairs though? Whoa. I'm, uh, supposed to meet someone here? A woman? Senorita? No. Rumo, please out. Guess what? The hotel is a trap. And all the locals swarm in on the guy. It's a trap! Yes, Akbar, but look at you, fish face, I don't trust you either. For the vast remainder of the film, Paul must evade capture, find Barbara, and survive this nightmare. Fish! Fish! We catch him, you boy! Iffy opening aside, once Dagon gets going, it is an unashamedly wild ride, full of camp and vigour. The reworked story beats from the source material are still timeless, retaining that classic gothic feel. The Lovecraftian mystique prevails over it all, the looming unthinkable horrors always awaiting below, let alone the constant threat of the zombie-like fish hordes. The fishy lady villain is played well by Hey Macalena Gomez. Her motivations and allegiances are always in the balance. One moment a friend, the next moment a foe. One moment you're getting it on, the next you're repelled by the fishy stench coming from down below. Who hasn't been there, am I right guys? <laughs> they even kept the story's soap opera climax. Hello princess. In combination with the campy tone, it still somehow bloody manages to work. Good job. Congrats. GG. Many have speculated that Resident Evil 4, one of the greatest video games of all time, was heavily inspired by Dagon. I concur. In fact, I can't watch the film without constantly recalling fond memories of Ashley screaming the name <laughs> For a start, we have a rural isolated Spanish village that is entirely populated by creepy, partly supernatural locals who shamble about, shouting and pointing at outsiders. Some of them also have mouth tentacles. They were also converted by a strange religious cult. There is also a giant aquatic monster. And I have to ask, does this guy look at all familiar? Welcome! <laughs> Thank you. Ah. Not only will you need cash, but you'll need cash to buy that weapon. Stranger. 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 The connection has never been confirmed by Capcom or the RE team, as far as I'm aware, but the series has been taking inspiration from Romero's films and the like since the very beginning, so I wouldn't be surprised. Regardless, as a standalone film, I am upset that we never got the quote unquote true version of Shadow over Innsmouth, but I am very grateful that Dagon exists at all. Now let's all go eat some trout. <laughs>